Hey everyone, welcome back to another training video for the EDM 830. Uh, my name is Dave Kalischuk. I'm the Chief Flight Instructor at Owen Sound Flight Services. And this is Module 5. So this is the pre-flight module. We're going to talk about pre-flight checks, ways that you can use the engine monitor prior to departing to um, diagnose potential issues with the um, aircraft. So let's jump right into it. Um, battery voltage is one that um, is a great uh, parameter that we can uh, monitor. Um, battery voltage essentially tells us the life um, status of the battery, also the status of the charging system depending on whether the aircraft is running or not. So when the aircraft is off, uh, if we flip the avionics master on, we can see the current state of the battery. And if the aircraft is on, we can see the current charging state of the battery. So that's a pretty neat feature. So the Cessna 172M uh, 1976 has a 12 volt, 25 ampere hour battery with a 14 volt, 60 amp charger, uh, alternator, that's a charging system. So um, the alternator is uh, higher uh, voltage than the battery so that it can supply a charge to the battery. And uh, in flight, we want that battery, to, that battery to be recharged from the job it does at the beginning of the flight. So the battery's main job is to provide um, electrical power for starting the engine, but cranking over uh, that big propeller on the front. So that draws a lot of power. It takes a lot of power to do that. Um, and in flight, uh, the charging system uh, will resupply power back to the battery. And in the event of um, an alternator failure or charging system failure, or the charging system was uh, perhaps disconnected from the electrical system, then the battery will still run um, and will provide essentially 25 amps of power for one hour, hence the 25 amp per hour battery. So ideally in flight, um, we should see a voltage uh, greater than 12 and something less than 14 volts. So typically um, this is around 13 and a half um, to maybe 13.9, something like that, uh, volts in flight. And that just means that our battery is getting supplied with a good positive charge rate. So that's one thing that we want to look at while we're flying is check in on that charge rate and make sure that it um, is not uh, depleting or going in the negative way. And um, also when um, we're between flights, if the aircraft is going to be sitting prolonged on the ground, say in a cold hangar for weeks or months, um, you could periodically check in on it and see the status of the battery itself. So uh, you could note the voltage um, at the start of the flight and um, if it's a lot less than 12, um, your battery may start to struggle to start the engine. And uh, we have our own internal policy uh, where if the battery power is less than 11 volts, um, we're not going to start it. We're just going to charge it instead. So um, if you have a really weak battery, something like 10, 10 and a half volts, and um, you hand prop, you can hand prop and start the aircraft if you're very careful on that technique. Um, but the, one of the problems with that is um, if the battery is very weak and you hand prop it, um, the charging rate uh, that the aircraft supplies could be in excess of um, a charging rate that is conducive to the longevity of your battery. So what I mean by that is if you start charging your battery too fast from too weak of a state, uh, you could do damage to the battery and um, it could cause uh, some of the electrolyte to even evaporate um, and ultimately you may end up then be on the hook for another $200 to $400 battery. So ideally if you can um, measure the voltage of the battery uh, prior to starting or if you're flying infrequently prior to starting or at least monitor it throughout um, most flights, uh, you can better manage your battery care and, and have a longer battery life. So in flight, the voltage should be somewhere around the 14 volt mark um, as being supplied to the battery. And when the engine is not running, you will be able to read just the actual battery um, voltage at rest. So that's a really cool feature, especially for um, areas like where we are, where in the winter time, sometimes it snows for a week straight and we're not flying at all. Or during a pandemic shutdown where we might not fly for a month. Uh, we can check in on those batteries, and if they're getting low, we can put a charge on them. So uh, that's a really nice feature. 
Um, one of the next things that we can do in the uh, pre-flight stage is actually in the run-up. So um, in the run-up, uh, while we're doing a magneto check or checking the um, ignition system by selecting one magneto or the other, there are things that we can watch for on the engine monitor. And as we discussed in the last video about the normalize uh, view, um, that can be a great way to see trends uh, uh, much more readily. They're uh, exacerbated. The, um, they're much more sensitive um, as, the, as the bar graphs move up and down. So we can see that very easily in the normalized mode. So I'm going to show you this quick uh, video here on um, normalize on the run-up. And we're going to be utilizing normalize mode uh, in this scenario. And so you can kind of see... Um, how that looks. So we'll just run through this video for you here uh, real quickly. Okay, when it comes time to doing the engine run-up, there's some really great features of the EDM 830 that we can use to help with some diagnostics of the engine. So when we increase the mixture to full rich and we bring our throttle up to 1700 RPM, we're going to watch the analog gauge. That's our approved RPM gauge. Once we get to 1700 RPM and things are relatively stable there, we'll run through the first couple of items on the checklist. Normally you'd be using a checklist for this, but we'd look at the suction, we'd look at the ammeter, and then we would get to the point where we're going to be making the magneto select on left or right to see the ignition process. So now we can look at the EDM while we're doing this, and it's going to give us some critical insight into this. We can use a mode called Normalize, which will level all the EGT bars and CHT bars and increase their sensitivity by about four times as much. So hold down this lean find button for three seconds and you'll see the word norm appear on the left and in the top and you'll see all the EGT bars will flatline. So this is the normalized mode. Now when we go to make a change to the ignition key and we select one mag versus the other, we we'll see the RPM drop and then on the EDM we will see these blue EGT bars rising. When we go back to both, the RPM should return and the EGT bar should start to drop once again. Then we go to the other magneto, select the right magneto, we see the RPM drop, and then we see the EGT bars rising once again. And when we select back to both, we see the EGT bars start to drop. So what are we actually looking for here? What's actually going on? Well, the EGTs, the exhaust gas temperatures, are rising when we are operating on a single magneto. The reason for this is when we're operating on one magneto, it is only firing one spark plug in each cylinder. Normally, both spark plugs are firing in each cylinder, making a nice even combustion. But when we select one magneto, only one plug is firing. As a result of that, the combustion process is not as efficient. It takes a little bit longer for all the fuel vapor to be fully burned. And so that combustion uh, process, that expansion, that heat, uh, everything gets a little bit delayed. It's a little more laggy. And that delay sends more hot gases through the exhaust and over the sensor of probes, which then indicate a higher temperature. So because of the single magneto operation, the process for the combustion is delayed and therefore the gases are hotter. They're still kind of burning in a sense as they pass by the EGT sensor. And so then you see that rise in EGT. Now if you didn't see a rise, if you saw when you select one magneto, for example, one EGT was to drop out completely, uh, that would be an indication that you have a bad spark plug because if the EGT drops, that means it's very cold in there. And so therefore you're losing heat inside the cylinder and the EGT will drop as a result of it. Okay, so some cool um, fundamental things that we can now measure with the engine monitor during the run-up. So it's a great asset to us in this scenario. So in the run-up, we do our normal operations of setting the RPM, 1700 RPM. And then um, once we are set there, we're going to enter normalize mode. And it's important to wait until we are uh, have the power set before we enter normalize mode. Because again, normalize mode will set the sort of datum, the reference point, and if we then increase the power, all the bars will just rise up very high. So set the power to 1700 RPM, give it a few seconds, 
and then hold lean fine for three seconds or the black button for three seconds and you will enter normalize mode which you will uh, see by the two words norm, norm written on the left side and the top okay and then um, what we want to do is uh, get my laser pointer here we're going to um, do our magneto check so I want you to watch the uh, RPM here as we do this we switch to one magneto and we see that RPM make that drop and then after that we see the EGT start to rise and there should be this uniform rise of EGT and that tells us that everything is fine if they're all rising evenly everything is fine um, if one was to drop out then that would be an issue but they're all rising because only one of the two spark plugs are firing and when only one plug out of the two is firing the combustion process is not as efficient it's a little bit delayed it's elongated in its uh, cycle and so we're actually sending hotter gases by the EGT probes as a result and so we see that rise so it tells us that um, one plug is firing if one of them was to drop out uh, to nothing that would tell us that um, that plug is actually not firing because it's not producing any heat so then we can determine that there's actually a, a bad spark plug in there so a uh, uniform rise of uh, about 50 uh, EG on all EGTs is about what we want to see from that okay so normalize mode in the run-up why do we use it um, because it increases the graph sensitivity and we can see the EGT more precisely than in percentage mode so it's easier to see those um, sudden peaks or drops uh, happening in normalized mode. It's just uh, that much more sensitive. It increases the sensitivity for each bar um, to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit versus the previous one which is a, roughly about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, uh, that's why that happens. Okay, so we talked about the single engine, um, single mag operation and the EGT rise. So again, just to reiterate, um, when things are uh, operating on both magnetos, then each magneto is firing one spark plug at each cylinder. Okay? The left uh, magneto, in this case, this engine, the O320E2D in this configuration, the left magneto fires the top two spark plugs on the left side and the bottom two on the right. And the right magneto fires the top two on the right and the bottom two on the left. So the way you can think about that is each magneto fires the top plugs on its respective side. So if we know that information, then we can actually trace um, where the problem is. If we select one mag, say the left mag, and we see number three drop out, then we know that left number three is actually the bottom plug in number three. So we can trace that now and um, have our AME uh, more specifically targeted to uh, go take a look at this plug uh, for me and see what you can find there. Okay, so in single mag operation, only one plug is firing, and so it sort of elongates that process and if we select that plug and uh, it uh, doesn't go up in fact it drops down on EGT then we know that that plug is actually not firing that's why it's so cold in there and that tells us that we have a bad plug so uh, yeah it's a pretty neat uh, process we can find issues with the spark plugs and uh, we can see things like oil and lead fouled spark plugs oil fouled plugs can be um, sometimes cleared up with um, just getting things a little hotter in there uh, lead, plow, lead fouled plugs uh, a little bit more challenging to clear up uh, maybe not be able to clear them up on the ground and have to pull the plug and actually clean it so that's a pretty cool feature so when we're troubleshooting um, we can take a look at uh, what's happening in the uh, on the EGTs with good mags uh, good mag checks versus bad mag checks so in the good mag check scenario when the mags are on both um, we want to see sort of as we have the RPM up at 1700 even before we uh, normalize a good like relatively uniform um, cross-section of EGT bars and uh, when we uh, have a single mag operation we should see um, a uniform rise in EGT so that would be a good indication that the uh, single mag operation uh, the plugs are all actually working fairly well it's a uniform rise if we were to um, see something like this when the mags are on both uniform EGTs except for one that's a little bit higher um, we could reason that possibly one of the plugs in number four is not firing properly because we're already seeing that rise we're seeing that rise as if we had selected one magneto only. We see that rise here. We're seeing a higher EGT 
which could be an indication that only one of the plugs are firing and we're getting that delayed combustion process uh, going by the EGT probe. So even before we do anything or any checks at all, just normally um, on the ground or in flight, one high EGT uh, bar could be an indication that you have a spark plug issue in that cylinder. Okay, so we can determine that is true or not by um, doing the magneto check. So what would we see on that magneto if we were to actually uh, select the mag that had the bad spark plug? What would we see on that mag? What we would see is that exhaust gas temperature would actually drop out. It would actually start to plummet. So when we select one of the magnetos that has the suspected bad plug and we see that uh, exhaust gas temperature drop, that's telling us, that's confirming with us that, hey, that spark plug isn't producing any spark and therefore it's not producing any heat. And therefore here's the heat going by the exhaust gas temperature probe. It's a lot less. So that can be an indication that uh, that is our problem. So we can troubleshoot those problems and determine um, whether there's a bad plug or not, and we can trace it based on a diagram that shows us which magneto leads to which plug. So actually, I just had a situation like this a few uh, days ago when we were trying to exercise the aircraft after a long pandemic shutdown here, shutdown number one, three, two, two and a half. I don't know where we're at now. <laughs> but we had a bad plug, and um, Although it was sad to not be able to go flying, I was happy that I got some uh, data to show you so you can see that, uh, that scenario in action. So um, what we got was the uh, cylinder number three um, showed that uh, there was a foul plug in there. And when we selected the left magneto, we saw the drop on cylinder number three. So in normalized mode, it was very apparent and um, also we noticed a good RPM drop of a, oh, about 200 RPM, which is a significant drop with um, some, engine, some good engine roughness uh, happening as well. So when it gets to be sort of that feeling, that roughness, that much of a magneto drop, uh, RPM drop when selecting that one magneto, uh, could often be a lead foul plug, which is a little harder to clear up than just an oil foul plug. So uh, we'll play this clip for you a couple times and uh, we'll just kind of talk through some of the scenario. So what I'd like you to look at the first time is um, uh, just watch the EGT. So right now you can see that we are in normalized mode because it says norm right there and also says norm at the top. So we're in normalized mode. We're at 1700 RPM and uh, we're just about ready to do this mag check. And I want you to watch the EGT bar graph uh, when we hit this, uh, when we hit the, uh, switch the key over here. So let me just play that for you. Okay, so you saw that drop out very quickly. It's actually showing uh, nothing at this present time. Even though we're back on both again, it's actually going to take a little bit of time. I'll just show you here. It'll take a little bit of time to bring that back up to speed again. It slowly climbs back on both. So just watch again. Uh, watch the RPM drop this time. We'll see a good 200 plus RPM drop. Hey, we can see the same thing on the RPM on the engine monitor. So we're starting at around 1670 down to about 1490. So almost a 200 RPM drop, and watch how fast this bar graph drops down here. Okay, so um, pretty rough running, and in normalized mode, we can really see that change. Um, you can you can still see the change in percentage view, um, but it's not as apparent. So I'll just show you that right now as well. Here's, um, here's percentage view, and here's, here's how you know that we're in percentage view. Uh, first of all, the words norm are not written here or here. There's no norm. And also, there's, um, we can see the graduations on the left-hand side, which are the uh, maximum red line and the lowest number here, and the red bar across, and none of the graphs are even at all. Um, but what you do notice is, uh, what do you notice here about number three? With the mags on both, number three is actually running a little bit higher than the rest. This is our indication uh, right at the beginning that, hey, maybe there's something going on here. We have number three up 
uh, a fair bit above the, the rest here. I mean, number one is kind of high too, but number three is really showing us something. So watch the, um, the same uh, check on uh, percentage view, but it's not as, as aggressive. You can see it definitely drops down, but it's not quite as aggressive of a drop as it is in the, uh, in the normalized view where it just really plummets. The second you turn it on, it's just gone. It's, it's really easy to see. So that's the sensitivity of the uh, normalized view versus percentage view. Uh, now, we have techniques that we can do in the aircraft. If you've um, been trained on this, you've practiced this uh, to clean up a bad plug. Um, so I did attempt to clean up this plug, and the way we do that is we um, increase the power to try and make things a little bit hotter in there. So on the ground, um, we're going to bring the RPM up to about 2,000 RPM and try to lean out to the leanest we can get and uh, try and really increase the temperatures inside the cylinder um, to help clean up the plug. If there's only a tiny bit of lead fouling or if it's an oil fouled plug, um, you can often clean this up this way. But um, if, if it's really lead fouled, then there's no way it's going to clean. Uh, you have to you have to really be careful when you do this, so I'm not recommending to you to do this if you haven't been shown how to do it. Uh, certainly if you're one of our pilots or students or renters, we'd prefer you not to do this. Uh, you just come and actually we'd ask you not to do this. <laughs> prefer, I want to use a accurate language. Please don't do this. Uh, so come and see us if you get a bad plug and tell us which what plug it is and uh, that would be great. Um, but as, uh, as flight instructors, as um, people who've been flying for 25 years, and been showing how to do this um, here. I, I want to show you uh, an attempt to clean this up. So um, started to uh, increase some power here to 2,000 RPM, and basically leaning out the mixture to try and get things uh, a little bit hotter in there. Okay, and what we'll see here is see this red EGT graph is now flashing red, and that's indicating that we've uh, we're sort of redlining on EGT, and even if uh, even though I put it into um, percentage view, it still kept on flashing red here. So we're in normalized view now, and in percentage view we can see it there as well. And that's because it's um, basically reaching its red line, which is 1650. It's actually showing about 1660. Now keep in mind, again, um, EGTs don't really have a red line. There is no red line on EGT. Uh, the biggest concern here is CHT. So we can see the CHT on number 3 is around 324, that looks like. Um, we also have to be very careful when we're doing this on the ground that we don't overheat the engine. So it's very easy to get carried away and try and clean this up and clean this up. Meanwhile, your CHTs are going 350, 380, 400, uh, and you're not getting very much cooling because you're just sitting there in the breeze where you're not, the aircraft should be moving forward through the air to get some adequate cooling. So you, you don't want to do this for, for a prolonged period of time, just about maybe 30 seconds or 45 seconds and then bring the power back down and see if you uh, are able to um, make a change at all. So I'll just fast forward here to where the power is reduced. So start to bring the power back down to 1700 RPM. The fact that the EGT stayed that high is an indication that it didn't really clean up. Um, that's already a, a pretty strong indication of that. But anyway, we get to 1700 and put the mixture back in and try it again and uh, let's see what we get as a result. Boom, still just plummeting, right? So I'm um, not able to clean that up. So that's the, you wouldn't want to try anymore. You pretty much got to call it there. Otherwise, you're just, you're just wasting time and, and uh, causing stress to the engine. But uh, one thing I want to show you as well is you see the EGT bar, how it's um, skyrocketed here. If you were to uh, take off with this bad plug, that's what you would see on the takeoff. So Let's say you're sitting there on the ground and uh, you've just completed your run up and let's say you didn't notice that bad plug, for example. Uh, just fast forward here. When you go to uh, hit the full power on takeoff, um, because only one spark plug is, f is firing, you're going to see that bar graph shoot up and go to the red on the EGT. And that should be a good warning to go, holy crap, something's happening. I need to really get down here. So watch for, watch for red, um, obviously in a takeoff scenario. Any red, any flashing, any alarms, any X's, any red here. Um, that's what we're kind of watching. I mean, of course, we have to be focusing on the takeoff itself uh, and um, looking ahead, looking out the window, 
all that, but when you're talking about um, incorporating the engine monitor into your scan technique in the climb and takeoff, these are the things that we're kind of looking for. So needless to say, uh, that plug is um, fouled up pretty good and we need to resolve that through um, a maintenance uh, issue. So, uh, but at least what we can do is tell them, well, um, when we selected the left magneto, the number three uh, EGT dropped out. So remember that the left magneto fires um, the spark plugs on the left side of the engine and the right magneto is on the right side of the engine. And if you remember back to the diagram, the engine's uh, cylinders are actually labeled one, two, three, and four. And that was cylinder three, so that was on the right side of the engine from the left mag, which means it's the bottom plug. So that's a really cool way that we can uh, at least give our maintenance crew um, some good uh, diagnostic tools to say, here's, here's what we think it is, uh, go chase after it and uh, let us know what you find. So that's uh, some information on EGT in the run-up regarding magneto checks and ignition system, spark plugs, and that's a really cool function that we can uh, utilize that for. So pretty neat. Um, again, we don't want any of our um, student pilots or rental pilots trying to clean it up. If you see that mag drop, it's outside of limits. Uh, that's when you just um, return, shut down, and come and talk to us. And uh, if you have an instructor on board, they may attempt to clean it up. Um, but we really have to be careful because um, getting temperatures too hot can do more damage than um, the initial spark plug issue in the first place. But those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Okay, another cool part of the uh, EDM in the run-up is uh, during the carb heat check. So I'll show you a quick video here about how it integrates into the carb heat check. Let me just bring it up full screen for you. And uh, you can see some interesting things about carb heat check and um, temperatures. Okay, let's look at the carburetor now. We can pull the carb heat on and we can see our normal indications that we're used to seeing on the RPM gauge when we introduce the carb heat. We'll usually see the RPM drop. So let's bring on the carb heat knob. We're going to look at the RPM. We see that drop. And now we also see a couple interesting things. Number one, the carb temperature is increasing. At the very bottom of the EDM 830, we have carb temperature. So it's gone up. And also the EGT bars have drop down a little bit so that got a little bit cooler in the engine as a result of that. When the carb heat goes back it's cold, the EGTs rise again and the carb temperature starts to drop again in Fahrenheit. And when we pull it on we see that rise in carb temperature. So we want to see that rise in carb temperature with the carb heat on. That tells us that the carburetor heat knob is actually supplying the engine with warmer air. But then the question is, why are the EGTs dropping? Well, the carburetor heat is sending hotter air to the engine, and the hotter air is less dense. So when there is less dense air going to the engine, then that means that the mixture ratio is such that there is more fuel to air than there was in the past. And when there is more fuel, when the, richer, when the mixture is richer, that means that there's more cooling. The extra fuel adds to the cooling. So we can see the effects of carburetor heat with that change in the EGTs. So this is a pretty neat um, addition to our normal checks that we've done in the past where when we check carb heat, um, basically we have one metric to measure that is functioning and that is an RPM drop. So normally we pull the carb heat on, we watch the RPM drop, usually around 80 to 100 RPM. And that indicates carb heat's working. And the reason that indicates it's working is because we should have less power when we introduce hotter air. The hotter air uh, introduces a richer mixture, which is a less uh, chemically correct mixture. So the performance of the engine is degraded because it's not getting a proper ratio of fuel to air. And we see that in a power reduction, a power loss. But now we have a couple other um, uh, metrics we can use to uh, evaluate it. Uh, one, we have a carb air temperature sensor which is uh, probably the best because <laughs> it's telling you the temperature in the carburetor. And number two, um, we have EGT, which is an interesting byproduct of uh, sending a richer mixture to the engine. So um, during the carb heat check, basically we pull the carb heat on and we're going to watch the RPM drop. So as we pull that carb heat on, there's that RPM drop. And uh, then we um, can also notice the carb temperature rise. So um, now the carb temperature is in uh, Fahrenheit. There's no way for us to turn it to Celsius for some reason. That's the way 
JPI has set it up and I contacted them and tried to convince them that we should be able to set this to a different temperature and they said no you can't set one series of temperatures to Fahrenheit and one set of temperatures to Celsius and I said well the outside air temperature is Celsius and they said well that's a different probe and I said so is the carb temperature but it was a losing battle anyway seems like they want to just keep with the latest uh, software update I know I you know, I, I, I knock on them a little bit. It's a great product. It, it really is a great product. But there's a couple things that they could do to make it a little bit better. But anyway, so um, we put a little placard at the bottom of, um, of our EDM. That is a, um, it's a conversion from um, Celsius to Fahrenheit because the POH for the 172 has that minus 15 to plus 5 carb temperature range, which is the danger range inside the carburetor. So we just put... Um, that conversion there. So it's actually plus five to plus 41 that we want to be careful of. So when we get the carb uh, temperature above plus 41 or below plus five, uh, that's um, a good indication that we're already in a, in a better place. Um, so when we bring the carb temperature on, if it gets above 40, you know, that's a good, that's a good place to be. So here it's getting up all the way to 60 um, on the ground in this run up. And so that's great. The other funny thing about carb uh, temperature is um, JPI, when they design these, they have uh, their linear gauges with a uh, green and red zone, and it's kind of silly that they have just red at the end here, um, when really the danger zone is in between extremes. It's, if we got really cold, it wouldn't be dangerous. If it got really hot, it, it would be less dangerous. So really the red should be in the middle, uh, but uh, you think I can convince them to, <laughs> to make that software change too. Maybe I just set a, a, a bot to send them an email once a week for the next year, and, and ask for this change and uh, I'll get one of my guys Andy to uh, write a script to do that we'll eventually get something out of this anyway um, good system it's just a couple small quirks I would would have liked to have seen but anyway so we're gonna note that temperature rise in the carb and also the EGT drop is a third sort of uh, indicator so like I said we should be looking at um, primary functions um, you know the RPM is a, is a certified gauge we want to see that is dropping it shows us that power reduction, but also the carb temperature is, um, I mean, irreplaceable. You see the temperature rising in there. Uh, certainly the carburetor heat is working, obviously. So, um, let's see, where are we at now? Let's go to why the RPM drop. We talked about that. The hot air is less dense uh, when the RPM is uh, dropped, and... Too much fuel to support efficient combustion. Yeah, we talked about that loss of performance. So, yeah, we know why um, that's happening, and uh, we've talked about the EGT drop as well in the video. So, when we're setting that hotter air into the engine, um, the air is less dense, therefore the mixture is richer, and richer mixtures uh, mean uh, cooler running as extra fuel evaporates and we get evaporation cooling, just like when you. Um, um, have uh, say a can of lighter fluid or something and, and you, uh, you, you spray an aerosol can you feel the can getting cooler uh, because of that uh, vaporization happening as well so uh, anyhow um, those are some things that we can look at for the carb heat uh, check RPM plus carb temperature plus EGT drops and that is all pretty cool so let's move on to uh, the run up with the mixture check I'll just give you a full screen video of that here. Now the next one we're going to look at is the actual mixture knob. So normally when we bring the mixture out, we're watching the RPM, it's going to rise and then fall. But we can also see that change on the EGT. So as we lean the mixture out, we're going to watch the EGT gauges and they should be slowly rising. So as we bring the mixture knob out, 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 we see those EGT bars going up, up and up. And then we can look at the RPM gauge to see the very slight rise and then the fall in RPM. So we want to catch that rise and then the fall. So that tells us that the mixture control knob is functioning properly. As we lean the mixture out, it sends a more chemically correct ratio of fuel to air. And then we see that temperature increase inside the cylinder and in the exhaust gas temperatures. And then we see that rise and fall. So that's how we can do the mixture check with the EDM830. So we can get a lot of troubleshooting with the EDM830 and then when we're done we're going to hold that lean find button for three seconds again and we're going to exit lean find and go back to our percentage mode. Okay so um, 
Now we have another metric in the mixture check. So typically when we are doing our run-up, we do a mixture check. We um, lean the mixture out, we watch the RPM start to slowly rise, and it rises to a point and then starts to drop off. At that point where it starts to drop, we enrich the mixture back in again. And that tells us that the mixture is working. And we can determine the mixture is working because we know that with an increase in power, um, that we have done something in the engine to get that power as a result of, so it's the leaning of the mixture that is uh, sending a more chemically correct balance of fuel and air to the engine, which is making the engine perform better. And that's why we see that rise in RPM, because the engine is actually performing a little bit better. And then once it falls off, that shows us that we've actually taken too much fuel out and it's performing a lot worse. <laughs> so we push it back in. So that was our traditional metric to um, determine that the mixture control knob is working. And that's great, but one other one that we can look at is, um, is actually the uh, uh, exhaust gas temperature. So as we lean the mixture in normalized mode, um, we can see rises in EGT because as we um, take away fuel, we uh, reduce cooling and we make it hotter in there. So that's another metric that we can use as well in that scenario. And I just want to go back to that video one more time just to see slight uh, rise fuel flow here. So we started also at about 6.1 gallons or so. And as we lean out the mixture, we can also see um, fuel flow decreasing. So we went, we went from like 6.2 to uh, about 5 gallons an hour. But when we're at these, this low of a power setting, um, the actual gallons per hour is not as accurate as it would be in, in cruise flight. So it's maybe not the best metric to use, but it does show an indication as well. But, you know, you can only look so many places at once, <laughs> otherwise the engine's just going to quit on you while you're trying to do this. So my suggestion is, as you lean the mixture, look at the EDM first to see some uh, EGTs are rising. And then once you confirm that there's rising going on, then look over at the RPM, because you want to catch that um, RPM before it drops too far. So you'll see that do its last little bit of a rise, and then as soon as it starts to fall, you can push it back into full rich. So, uh, we talked about why the EGTs rise, better fuel ratio, watch that RPM fall, enrich in, and um, oh, this is a big one too. After the flight is done, make sure you return to percentage mode. If you remember in uh, the previous videos I was telling you, the uh, last thing you want to do is um, take off <laughs> with a normalized mode because you'll see these bars rise all the way up. Everything, CHT, EGT will all go right to the top and you'll be freaking out saying, oh my god, the engine's going to explode. And it's just because it's in normalized mode, because relative to the datum that you had set previously, which was maybe idle power or run-up power, you're suddenly a lot more than that. So make sure you go back to percentage mode. How can you tell you're in percentage mode versus normalized mode? Well, number one, um, normalized mode has the letters norm written here and at the top. And normalized mode doesn't have any graduations on the left-hand side um, for the actual temperatures. Whereas percentage mode does, you see the red line that we set there, and you see the bottom end of that. And uh, you'll also see this red line across the cylinders. So make sure you're back in percentage mode before you depart. So look for these red lines here and the graduations there, and no normalize to make sure uh, that's set before you uh, move on from that. Otherwise, um, you'll get more excited than you need to in the uh, takeoff scenario. Okay, so a couple of quick JPI videos here to end out this presentation on uh, run-up. But uh, JPI is uh, mentioning that we should be alert for um, unusually low voltage, uh, cold oil, abnormally high CHT, and any warnings. And again, what we mean by warnings and um, alarms is anything red, anything with X's, anything flashing. Uh, those are all the things that we want to kind of watch out for. So I'll just play those uh, one at a time in full screen for you. The first one is, um, is a normalized mode, so it's just now that you've learned more about normalized mode, maybe you'll get more out of this video, so have a quick listen to that. You can also normalize the display to view small variations by holding the black lean find button down for three seconds. A one bar change in column height represents a 10 degree change. The normalized view permits rapid visualization of EGT trends rather than a percentage of red line. Hold the black lean find button to return to percentage view again. Okay, and the next one is their run-up uh, video. During run-up, look for a uniform rise of about 50 degrees in a single magneto operation. 
A failed plug will show up as a sharp reduction in EGT. You should see a uniform rise and fall of EGTs when cycling the mixture control. Be alert for abnormal bus voltage, cold oil temperature, or high CHTs. Any yellow, red, or blinking should be immediately investigated and resolved before takeoff. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much it. Um, the engine monitor, awesome. yes, thank you. <laughs> the engine monitor can do uh, quite a lot for us in the pre-flight scenario. And um, you know, it, once you're airborne, you can't really pull over, right? And then we're getting into other exciting things like how to manage an, a forced approach. So the more we can do on the ground, the better. Um, the more, now we have more metrics to measure things that we could measure before, um, sort of more direct metrics for um, um, the uh, magnetos, the uh, in, uh, ignition system, the efficiency of the ignition system, spark plugs, um, the carburetor, heat, the mixture, all those things we can see in different ways. So uh, we can then um, be more confident that the system's up to speed for the flight that we're about to take. And if we have any discrepancies at all, then we can just cancel the flight, right? Better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. So now we have that uh, system that affords us that, uh, that ability. And then with troubleshooting, um, we can see uh, a number of different diagnostics and help our maintenance team to uh, better troubleshoot. Um, so actually, oh, one more thing I'll show you here is um, in the uh, manual for the uh, EDM 730, there's basically uh, three pages of diagnostic uh, tools that you could use for different symptoms. So you can take a look through JPI's documentation on that and it uh, gives you a whole bunch of information that if you see this, this could mean that this is happening. So very cool stuff with the EDM in the pre-flight scenario. And um, the next module we're gonna talk about, uh, the last one for now is module six. It's in flight, it's uh, quite a bit shorter and just talks about some things to watch out for while we're flying. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you got some uh, insight into the engine monitor from that and our operation, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.